Listen, if you're living from paycheck to paycheck, I understand you. I get you. A lot of people are. And it really is irrespective of how much money you earn. There are folks who earn upwards of 100 grand a year and still live paycheck to paycheck. It's a matter of lifestyle. You know, the decisions you're making with your money, your spending habits. This is really the culprit here. Okay. Now, living paycheck to paycheck is by no means a positive thing. You end up stressed out, wondering where your next dollar is coming from. And then your financial future is unsecure because you're unable financially to take advantage of savings opportunities. You're missing out on compound interest. Compound interest is a big deal. Listen, you're really missing out. Now, I'm not trying to stress you out. And there is a solution. You want to hear it? dramatically cut your expenses. And when I say dramatically, I don't mean buy a black coffee instead of a latte. I mean, that will sort of add up, but you want something dramatic. I'm talking like sell your car. Yes. Or move in with your parents um, so you can save on rent. You have to decide what dramatic means for you. It's going to be different for everyone, but you want something that's going to save you a good extra $500 a month, something like that, okay? It's not going to be easy, but this type of sacrifice can change your life, okay? Make the sacrifice. Do something dramatic. I've done it. I know what it's like. It's not easy, but it's worth it, my friends. Now let's talk about what you actually should be doing with your money. So check this out. All right, so we're going to start off with your paycheck. Now, right off the bat, you can see that there's going to be a couple of deductions. There's the 401k or the CPP, as we call it in Canada. Now, this is a wonderful pre-tax way of contributing to your retirement. I understand in the States you could potentially opt out of this, but why would you want to? Some employers will match your contributions or even double or triple it. And the government allows you to make this contribution before you pay taxes. The next deduction is going to be the social security insurance or the employment insurance as we call it in Canada. Hey, you got to pay those taxes. Some employers will also deduct a union fee. Okay. If you're a part of a union, all of these things sort of come out before you actually get your wage in your checking account. We're going to move on to the checking account now. All right, so we're going to start off with necessities. Now, before you can achieve anything, you have to actually be alive, right? Okay, so there's shelter, there's food, there's utilities, and transportation. You got to get to work somehow, okay? So you may as well call these a fixed cost. And at this point, it's important to distinguish between needs and wants, okay, my friends? Please do not categorize a want as a necessity. If you can survive without it, then survive without it. So next we have the emergency fund. This is a big deal, friends, because life happens, okay? You want to be ready for it. What if your car breaks down or some other unforeseen expense just comes up? Ideally, you're going to want four months worth of expenses saved up in your emergency fund, okay? And this will help you to stay afloat if you happen to lose your job. You could walk into work tomorrow and find that you don't have a job, all right? That's where an emergency fund really does come in handy, especially in the interim before applying for something like unemployment insurance or something like that, okay? Now, this is going to have to be liquid and easily accessible. Now, when I say liquid, I mean cash or some sort of cash equivalent. If your emergency fund is wrapped up in a house and you have to sell a house before getting your emergency fund, then you're in some serious trouble. Now, after you've made a contribution to your emergency fund, you're going to want to tackle that debt, my friends. Reduce the balance on those credit cards specifically. Any debt that you have that has some exorbitant high interest rate, 20 percent or even up to 25, some credit cards do. Um, you're going to want to reduce those balances as soon as possible. OK, so I don't know how aggressive you want to be with your payments of these, but I suggest be aggressive. If you really want to change your life, improve your credit score, you're going to want to make some sizable contributions here. OK, I don't mean the minimum payments. Listen, the minimum payment may as well just be a rent to have you hold a credit card that has a balance on it. OK, you're going to want to pay more than the minimum payment. 
So a way of taking care of it would be uh, the beginning of the month at some point, you can pay the minimum balance by the required due date or deadline. And then at some other point in the month, pay something a little more sizable on it, okay? Um, next, you have other types of loans, uh, lower interest loans, like maybe a student loan or a line of credit. You're gonna also wanna make payments on that. The idea is to improve your credit score. Maybe you have plans in the future, you know, maybe to purchase a house, get married, I don't know, something like that. You need to have your life sorted <laughs> to be able to do these things. And these payments that could actually improve your credit score will improve your life, okay? They'll help your prospects. You'll be a lot better off financially. Yeah. Now, you just heard me mention getting married or buying a house is a long-term goal, and that's what this next category is for, okay? You're gonna wanna save some money at low risk to finance maybe some higher education that you're looking to pursue, or a special vacation. Maybe a friend is getting married abroad and you have to participate in the wedding. This would be a great fund to prepare you for these things, all right? For big goals, big dreams, you know, you need to save toward a down payment for a house. So this is it. You're gonna want it to be low risk and you're gonna wanna make consistent contributions to this fund to realize your dreams. And finally, we have investment. Now this category deserves an entire YouTube video all to itself, all right? It's a big deal. So there's real estate, there's stock market investments, there's bonds, and a number of other options for you if you're looking to invest. But compound interest is awesome and you need it. Not everybody gets to take advantage of it, but for those who do, it puts them ahead in their life. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get ahead, right? You're gonna wanna invest. That's how you take advantage of compound interest. We're gonna talk about that in a video that follows. Look out for it. Thank you so much for watching up until this point. I'm Paul McKay. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm gonna have some awesome, very helpful advice coming up very shortly. Thank you.